Hi, this is Phil at Simply Rhino. In this video, I'm going to take a look at shrink wrap, which is new in Rhino 8. First of all, what is shrink wrap? Well, essentially, it's a tool that creates a watertight mesh from geometry that is less than optimal. So, it's a means to an end or a pragmatic tool that we would reach for when we just need to get the job done. In this example, the geometry comprises of an open mesh, an open poly surface, some spherical surfaces that intersect with the mesh, and a closed sub D and closed mesh that both intersect the poly surface. Nothing is joined together, and there's a hole in the top of the poly surface. So, if the aim was to create a watertight mesh to, for example, use for 3D printing, then shrink wrap provides an answer to what would otherwise be problematic. Shrink wrap sits in the Mesh Tools toolbar in Rhino 8, and if I run the command and then select all the objects here, I'll be presented with a dialog box with a series of options. Edge length is the primary way of controlling the size of the mesh facets. The starting value here is based on the size of the geometry to be meshed. Offset allows the mesh to be created inside or outside of our geometry and is useful, for example, for shelling. Smoothing iterations allows for additional smoothing of edges. As shrink wrap is voxel based, we can't create sharp edges. Finally, polygon optimization reduces the number of mesh faces in areas of low detail or curvature. For example, planar faces. I'll accept the suggested edge length to start with and then check preview and hide input objects so I can more easily see the new mesh. The fill holes option is enabled here and necessary not just to fill in the small hole in the poly surface but to make sense of the open-ended objects and avoid an odd result. More detail is resolved as I gradually reduce the edge length. A good approach here is to do this gradually rather than jumping straight to a small value. Increasing the polygon optimization from 10% to 30% reduces the overall number of faces and I'll now set the edge length to 0.1mm which should be fine for my 3D printing needs. And then look at the smoothing iterations. Looking at the area where the cylinder joins the planar meshes, increasing the smoothing iterations to, for example, a factor of 20, smooths out the internal edge around the base of the cylinder. I'll accept these settings and hit OK, and the mesh will build. If I now turn off all the layers except the mesh, I can see the result, and if I check this in Object Properties, you can see the mesh is closed. If I apply a material and show the result in the rendered viewport, you'll see that we have a pretty good result for a minute or two's worth of work. So that's the basics of shrink wrap covered. So now let's look at a couple of specific examples. This first example is based on something that we saw in training recently, where a customer wanted to do some quick modifications to an existing model of a seat back tray table where the geometry only existed as poor quality meshes. In this example, the tray table molding exists as two parts where the original geometry has been cut and shut. And these two halves have a different mesh topology and as such would be difficult to join together. There are also a number of missing faces. The modifications required in this example are the addition of a cup holder and some text. I've changed the object colour of these two meshes so it's easier to see the separate parts. And one of the first things I may need to address here is to fill in these holes in order to help shrink wrap maintain a planar mesh. There's no need to use meshes for this or to join the objects together, so I can simply create some three-sided surfaces to do this. I'll make sure that the vertex snap is on and then use surface from three or four corner points or surf point 
and then just snap the surface into place like this. This is really only necessary with large holes and in this instance prevents the shrink wrap mesh from sagging into the holes. Looking at the geometry of the text and cup holder, both of these are modelled as solid poly surfaces that intersect with the mesh. So these will be fine to work with as is. I'll go to the Mesh Tools tab in Rhino and run Shrink Wrap, and then select all the visible geometry. I'll start with an edge length of 4mm and set Offset, Smoothing Iterations and Polygon Optimization all to zero. I don't need the Fill Holes option to be enabled as I've used the surfaces to help with this. So I can go straight to Preview and then Hide Input Objects so I can see the preview more easily. The layer colour isn't helping here so I'll change this. And now we can see that we have a fairly loose mesh that approximates the target geometry and I'll now gradually reduce this edge length and as I do this more detail will be resolved. At an edge length of 1mm things are starting to improve and I'll now add polygon optimization with a value of 30% and this reduces the polygon count in the flat areas of the seat tray whilst retaining the detail. I'll keep reducing the edge length in small steps and of course each time I do this the mesh calculation will take longer and this is the result with 0.5mm. I'll increase the mesh optimization to 60% and this reduces the face count by about 30%. I'm now going to reduce the edge length further, this time with a value of 0.1 and I'll skip to the end of the calculation. To see what's happening with the edges here I'll switch to shaded viewport and turn off draw mesh wires. Shrink wrap uses voxels which are essentially 3D pixels or cubes to resolve the mesh and as such cannot resolve sharp edges. So we'll always see some disturbance on sharp detail whereas softened or filleted edges appear better resolved. With that in mind improving the edges here requires decreasing the edge length so I'll have one final go here with a value of 0.05mm. Once again I'll skip to the end of the calculation and check the result in the shaded viewport. And this is now looking much better. I'll OK this result and the mesh will calculate. I'll then turn off all the layers except the shrink wrap mesh and then look at the result in the rendered viewport. Applying a material here will help and you can see when I zoom in that the text edges have resolved quite well. In object properties the mesh reports has been closed and if I check the mesh Rhino reports that all is good with no problem areas. So if I was to triangulate this we'd be good to go for 3D printing. At Simply Rhino we work with a number of artists and sculptors who want to create manufacturable 3D solids quickly from a variety of reference geometry which is very often less than ideal. So let's look at one such example. So far I've only shown shrink wrap in isolation. But of course it's more often used in combination with other tools and in this example I'll look at creating a watertight shelled NURBS surface from this point cloud. Shrink wrap will create a mesh directly from a point cloud and in this example to give an idea of scale if we were to create a bounding box around the point cloud it would roughly equate to a 150mm cube and the points in the cloud are around 1 to 1.5 millimeters apart from each other. I'll start by going to the Mesh Tools toolbar, running Shrink Wrap and selecting the point cloud. When we run Shrink Wrap on a point cloud, 
inflate vertices and points will be selected. And, in very simple terms, what happens here is that each point in the cloud will be inflated outwards to create a cube of the nominated edge length. Given the right edge length, these cubes will of course intersect each other and will create the reference for the mesh. This means that in this example, our mesh will be a thin-walled, closed mesh with the outer surface being offset from the point cloud. This is something that we can deal with later so that the A surface of our NURBS object will conform closely to the point cloud. I'm going to start with a target edge length of 2 here and I won't use any optimization or smoothing at this stage. Next, I'll generate a preview and when I rotate this we'll see the thin section I described earlier and if I switch to an ortho view we'll see that the mesh is offset from the point cloud. I can reduce this offset by decreasing the target edge length but if I reduce this too much then holes will start to appear in my mesh. I'll settle on an edge length of 1.2 millimeters and if I apply a small amount of smoothing this will help the mesh conform to the point cloud more closely. I'll select OK and build the mesh. For the workflow going forward I really need to have a level planar base to my object and to achieve this I'm going to slice through the mesh and then extend the mesh downwards. Working in front view I'll create a line Make sure it's positioned properly and then from Mesh Tools I'll use Mesh Split to separate the bottom part of the mesh which I can then delete. I'll now be left with two meshes, the outside face that I want to keep and the inside face that I can delete. The next task here would be to retopologize and simplify the shrink wrap mesh and for this task I'm going to use Quad Remesh. Quad Remesh was introduced in Rhino 7 and sits in both the mesh and sub D toolbars. I'm after quite a tight mesh here, so I'm going to use target edge length rather than target quad count, and I'll set an initial value of 3 mm. I'll also select detect hard edges, convert to sub D, and I'll choose interpolate so that the sub D more closely fits the shrink wrap mesh. I'll select Preview to generate the sub-D and when this is finished calculating I'll select Hide Input Objects so I can see the sub-D more easily. The result looks OK and whilst I could perhaps use a smaller edge length I'm happy to accept this result and move the sub-D surface onto its own layer. Next, I'd like to move the open base of the sub D onto a Z height of 0, which will reinstate the original base point of the point cloud. And because I have an editable and pliable sub D, it's easy to do this whilst achieving a smooth result. I'll select the bottom set of sub D vertex points, check that I haven't either missed any points or selected any incorrect ones, and then I can use set points to move the selected vertices downwards. So I'll do this by setting the movement to world Z and typing in a value of 0. Next I want to check around this edge just to make sure that I haven't pulled points that aren't on the edge of the sub D. So this all looks OK. At the moment this sub D is slightly bigger than the point cloud. So I'm going to copy this off onto another layer and then make the point cloud layer visible and lock it. I'm going to offset the sub D inwards and it's probably easier to do this in an ortho view and in wireframe mode so I can more easily see the point cloud. And I'll also change the layer color to improve things further. I'll start by using an offset value of 1.2 which is the same value by which I inflated the vertices in shrink wrap. So I'll select the sub D surface and go to the sub D tools toolbar and select offset sub D. 
I'll set the command line options as follows. Distance, 1.2. Solid, no. Both sides, no. Delete input, no. And finally, flip all to offset inwards. The result looks pretty good and very close to the point cloud reference. Next, I'll need to offset again to create the B surface or shell thickness. And one of the benefits of doing this in sub D before converting to NURBS is that the offset will have exactly the same topology as the starting surface with none of the added complexity caused by offsetting to a tolerance that we see when using offset or shell with surfaces or polysurfaces. I'll run offset sub D again, set the distance to 2 mm, solid to yes, delete input to yes, and flip all to offset inward. The inner surface will be offset normal or perpendicular to the outer, and this means that the base of the object won't be planar. There's a number of ways I could correct this, but here I'll just select all the vertices from the bottom edge, carefully checking that I haven't selected any incorrect points, and use set points as previous to align the bottom edge to a Z height of zero. This will create a planar face at the bottom of the closed sub D and I'll have creases along both edges. Finally, I can convert the sub D to NURBS and this is a lossless push button conversion achieved by using the to NURBS command from the sub D toolbar. I'll set the command line conversion options to packed faces and G1X Extraordinary Vertices and enter to run the command. I'll move the resulting polysurface onto my NURBS layer and if I check in Object Properties you'll see that I have a closed polysurface. Looking at the bottom face this is complex and doesn't need to be as it's planar. So I'll delete it and use Duplicate Border to create boundary curves from both surfaces and then surface from planar curves to create a simple planar surface from the boundary curves. I'll delete the curves before joining everything else together into a closed solid polysurface with a simple base. Finally I'll apply a material and look at the result in rendered display mode. The fidelity of these surfaces is pretty good and shows how within a few minutes we can go from a point cloud to a manufacturable shelled solid object. So that's about the end of what I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching and please feel free to leave any comments below. If you found this video useful then please hit the like button and remember that to keep up with the latest developments in Rhino you can subscribe to this channel. At Simply Rhino, we offer training for Rhino and all its key plugins, so check out our website for more details. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch up with you in the next video.